In this video we're going to be uh, doing something we've already done in a previous video and that is adding and subtracting polynomials. But in the previous video we used the vertical method and in this video we're going to go ahead and use the horizontal method. You're going to see a lot of similarities between these two. Uh, some students will understand the vertical method a little bit better but as you practice it you'll get You'll see, you'll see how you can understand you don't have to actually make the columns anymore. You can actually see like terms just by comparing the terms in an expression or an equation. So this is kind of like the graduated method of adding and subtracting polynomials. And this is where I'd like you to get to, where you don't have to do the vertical method anymore. You can actually do the horizontal method. Now, if you can't do the horizontal method consistently accurate, then use the vertical method because I don't want you to make a mistake thinking that you can this is easier which it seems to be but you got to be able to do it correctly so find each sum or difference using the horizontal method all right so we've got two polynomials sorry two binomials that are added together so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this is what I typically do is I'll go ahead and mark all of the terms that are like terms so x to th x cubed there is no x cubed x squared we've got a positive 2x squared and we've got a 4x squared those are like terms and then the 3x that doesn't have any other term that goes with it because there is no other x term in the in the two binomials so now we have our two uh, terms that are like terms now we can go ahead and rewrite this so I'm gonna go ahead and write it out without the parentheses and I'm gonna put it in order so x cubed there's my first term so I'm gonna go ahead and just write x cubed oops let's write a little bit higher here I'm gonna write x cubed and then I've got a positive 2x squared and I've got a positive 4x squared and I've got a negative 3x now in this case when I write these out I'll, I'll rearrange the order of the terms so all my like terms are together you don't have to do that but it's a good way of organizing your work so now you see that the two like terms are right next to each other and now I'm gonna write out my final answer which is x cubed we've got a positive 2x squared and a positive 4 2 plus 4 is 6 so our second term is 6x squared, and then we put our minus 3x on the bottom, on the end. And I'm going to go ahead and circle that so you guys can see. There's my final answer. All right, and uh, just a note, just get good at this in class. You should always circle your final answer if it's unclear where it is, so it's easy to find it. All right, let's try the next one. We've got a negative a squared. I've got another a squared over here, so I'm going to put an underline in my a squareds. I've got a b squared term. There's no other b squared term, so nothing there. I've got a b term and a b term, so I'm going to double underline that. And I've got an a term by itself with no exponent, so that's not a that's not a, a like term with anything. So now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. I'm going to write uh, negative a squared. Sometimes what I'll do, it looks a little bit messy, but what I'll do is as I write the terms, I'm going to put a little cross off on that so that I know that I've covered that term, that I haven't missed any terms. So now I'm going to do the b squareds. So plus 2b squared. I got rid of that. Oh, I just realized, class, I did not get the other a squared term. Here's our other a squared term, so it's going to be plus 3a squared. That one's done. Now I'll pick up my 2b squared. There was nobody to combine with that. Now I've got a plus 5b. That has a double underline, so I've got another one over here, plus b. And then I've got my minus a at the end. All right, now I've put them in the proper order. Now you can see that I've got 2a squareds and I've got 2b terms. Let's go ahead and write our final answer. Negative uh, a, or negative 1 plus 3 is positive 2. This is 2a squared. 2b squared, it's by itself. 
5 plus 1b, so 5b's plus 1b, remember that 1 is there even though you don't have to write it, that's 6b, that's positive 6, not x, positive 6b, and then we've got our minus a at the end. And there is our final answer. Sometimes I'm not so good at circling these. That came out okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Now we're going to do subtraction or finding the difference between them. You'll see it's a little bit different, but it looks pretty much the same. I've got an x cubed term, no other x cubed. I've got a 2x squared, and I've got a 4x squared. Those are like terms. And then 3x is all by itself. Let's rewrite our terms in proper order. We've got x cubed. Then I've got positive 2x squared. Let's cross those off. Now, this is 4x squared, but we have to distribute the negative. This is a negative 1 times 4x squared. That meant ends up being a negative 4x squared. That one's done. And then in the end, we've got a negative 3x, but this is negative 1 times, whoops, negative 1 times negative 3x, and negative times a negative is a positive, and that means you've got positive 3x. Now you can see our like terms are the middle two terms. We can write our final answer, x cubed. We've got positive 2 minus 4. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2x squared. And then 3x is all by itself. It can't be combined with anything. X squared minus, sorry, x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x. There's the third one, and then one more. All right, we've got a negative a squared, and we've got an a squared over here. So there's a common or a like term with that one. b squared is by itself. 5b happens to have another b term over here, and the a doesn't have any like term with it. So we've, got, we've gone ahead and marked those. Let's go ahead and reorder this. So we've got negative a squared. I'll go ahead and I'll oh, get the 3a. There's a, there's a like term. So we've got, remember, we're going to distribute the minus sign here. So that ends up being minus 3a a squared. Then I go ahead and pick up our minus 2b squared. Again, let me write all these for you. This distribute the negative, that's negative 2b squared. Distribute the negative to the 5b, that's negative 5b. Distribute the negative to the b term, because that's our like term, that's negative b. And that, we did this already, we did this, we did that, we did that. We have one more to do, and that is our a term. And that is, distribute the negative to the negative a. Negative times a negative is a positive. That ends up being positive a. So that should be all of our variables in order. Now you can see that we've got our like terms together. Um, we've got a squared and a squared here and b and b here. Final answer, negative a squared. Oops, I missed that, messed that up. It's actually negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 4a squared minus 2b squared. Negative 5 minus 1, so negative 5b minus 1b is negative 6b. And then we've got a positive a on the end. Negative 4a squared minus 2b minus 6b plus a. And there is our simplified polynomial. All right. Now I've only got five minutes of video left. Let's see if we can cover this word problem. Actually, you know what? I do not want to rush this. So I'm going to stop the video here. We're going to go to the next video to go over this problem.